Hello everybody, this is Warning Coordination Meteorologist Barry Goldsmith from the National Weather Service Brownsville Rio Grande Valley office. Today we're going to discuss tsunamis and present to you a brief slide guide to help you understand the potential threat, impact, and things you can do to save your life should a tsunami strike. We'd like to thank the West Coast and Alaska Tsunami Warning Center as well as the United States Geological Survey for providing the data used in this guide. Could a tsunami strike South Padre Island? Believe it or not, yes. Of concern are submarine landslides or earthquakes that can cause them. These landslides are otherwise known as slumps. The two we look at are the East Break Slump, which is 130 miles northeast of South Padre Island, and the Mississippi Canyon and East Mississippi Fan Slump, about 515 miles east of the island. Tsunamis are extremely rare, but they're known to have occurred in ancient times and flooded the then unpopulated Texas coast. Despite these very low odds, very high and potentially catastrophic impacts could occur on 21st century South Padre Island and the entire Texas coast. We'll start with the East Break Slump and the propagation of a tsunami should one occur across the Northeast Mexico and South Texas coastline. The arrows shown here indicate possible zones where impact could be made the curved red line is the lower Texas coast. Let's assume we have a 20 kilometer wide slide or slump that occurs on the east breaks. In this case we initiate with a 70 or greater foot wave at the time of the landslide. In just 13 minutes that wave is propagated out at least 20 to 25 miles and though it has attenuated slowly, it still remains at 15 to 20 meters or 50 to 65 feet on the south and west side of the slump headed toward South Padre Island. A half hour after in initiation, the tsunami is now moving onto the continental shelf about 50 to 60 miles east of South Padre Island with an amplitude still as high as 15 meters or around 50 feet. Less than an hour and a half later, 83 minutes after initiation, the wave expected to slam into South Padre Island would be up to 20 feet tall. Using a storm surge case that was developed from a fictional Hurricane Carly that was modeled on the 1961 Hurricane Carla, with a more southern track making landfall near the Cameron and Willacy County border, we can look at how much inundation might occur with a fast moving tsunami wave along the lower Texas coast. As you can see here, the potential inland penetration is quite far with the 17-foot wave at the coastline, washing completely over South Padre Island and making quite a bit of inroads into Port Isabel, Laguna Vista, and the Brownsville Ship Channel. Please remember that storm surge is a different animal than a tsunami, and the wave action could be disrupted a lot sooner, meaning the amount of water that comes across the land may be a bit less than shown in this chart. But on the beach itself, we expect the water would be intact and 17 feet of water would produce between 8 and 10 feet of water on the land of South Padre Island, covering most first floors of just about every building there. The second slump is the Mississippi Canyon and a South Texas Northeast Mexico tsunami propagation. Here we're showing arrows to the Texas coast and each one of these yellow lettered areas is the time to landfall from the time of the slump occurrence. So it would be roughly three hours before it reaches South Padre and as much as four and a half hours before it reaches High Island along the Texas-Louisiana border. An example of the propagation and resulting wave heights is shown from an exercise that assumes a 6.6 magnitude earthquake in the Mississippi uh, Canyon or the East Mississippi Fan. That earthquake spawns a submarine landslide or slump which then propagates the wave action to the west, north, and east affecting the entire Gulf Coast. On this graph you can see the areas that would be impacted. The Texas-Mexican border and the Baffin Bay would each see nearly 12 feet of water or three and a half meters or so of elevation of wave when it reached the waters. South Padre Island on this chart is to the south of the edge of the map shown. The larger scale shows all the wave heights from such a slump event around the Gulf of Mexico. 
we've highlighted the lower Texas coast in red, and you can see the green area here indicates somewhere between three and three and a half meters of elevation. Highlighted in green once again, the Texas-Mexico border near Boca Chica Beach with 12.12 .12 feet, and Baffin Bay with 11.43 feet. In either case, that's quite a bit of, of energy coming towards the coastline with water that would overspread and overwash the barrier island. In this case, we've lowered the potential inland penetration from the Hurricane Carly case that we showed earlier down to 12 feet at the coast. But once again, because of the low elevation and ease of water movement towards land, many of the same areas would be covered in some degree of water. Certainly, South Padre would go underwater. And then the question becomes, how much of Port Isabel and Laguna Vista would? Once again, this shows the storm surge inundation area, not necessarily the height of the inundation, just the area. And tsunamis don't act like storm surges, but there could be even more power, which could potentially push more water in than we even have shown here. So some tips on being safe if a tsunami were to strike South Padre Island. You would not have that much time anywhere from 83 minutes or about an hour and a half to three hours in the case that we just showed for the Mississippi slump. So we want you to make three moves. Move up. The East Breaks event can arrive so quickly that you don't have time to escape the island. Jump into the high-rise buildings and get as high as you can to save your life. Move inland. A Mississippi Canyon event may provide you three hours to move inland, but if the event occurs when the beaches are crowded, such as spring break or the middle of summer, most visitors should consider moving up and allow others who live on Port Isabel, Laguna Vista, the first opportunity to move inland. Finally, move fast but move orderly. Time is critical, but stay calm and be sure to follow instructions from local officials and not panic. For more information on tsunamis, you can check out our website at www.tsunamiready.noaa.gov. On this page, you'll find all additional tips on what to do if a tsunami should strike in English and here in Spanish. Again, that website is www.tsunamiready.noaa.gov. We thank you for joining us today, and remember to be aware and be prepared.